I'm your host, journalist Singamalt, and you're watching the International Pub News. We would like to start today's program by going over the biggest event in Dofus's 20-year history. Unity. A few days before your family shows you through the gifts you get that once again you are their least favorite crotch goblin, Dofus will roll out its biggest update of its history, which will see the game evolve into something incredibly bigger and better. In their presentation, they blew our minds with videos of how cool the animations will look on the Astrobe Zap scambot. And to respond to many concerns from the community, the developers ensured us, however, that while it's mainly a graphical change, many of the features that are central to the game that we've come to love over the years will still be there. The ones to look forward to most are faster lag, longer queues, and angrier bots whose rioting makes these racist scumbags look pretty reasonable. With the official release date being the 13th of August, we have put Streamer Malt on the task of covering the event with an all-day stream, so go on and show him some support. On the same topic, Ankamas released some information yesterday about the beta itself and what to expect from it. And this is the summary of the most important things. The release date, as we said, will be the 13th of August. In order to access this beta, you will need to be subscribed and all you need to do is open the launcher and toggle this button right here to the one that reads beta. The duration of the beta will be a staggering 3 months, or in other words, as many days as it takes Bamis to reach level 100 and you take 10 from it. The beta will have two types of new servers, mono account and multi account and we will see three phases over the whole period. Each phase will last approximately four weeks. Hello, Editor Malt here. While I generally don't care about numbers, I'm curious to see what kind of opportunities bigger numbers can bring to the channel. With that said, I've noticed that 60% of people who enjoy the videos that I make are not subscribed. Let's see what happens if more people do subscribe and we have bigger numbers. Thank you for listening and enjoy the rest of the video. Phase one, where we all start in a new server from scratch. Phase 2, here the team will port all existing servers and you get to play your character but in the Unity servers. When contacted about why Shadow was left out, they had this message directly addressed to Jay. Fuck you Andrew! Fuck you Andrew! Fuck you, Andrew. Don't give a shit about your motherfucking opinion, get the fuck out of here! <laughs> and the third and last phase is similar to the betas that we have come to know recently, where you access all the items, perfect stats, you can level a character with a couple clicks, and you have access to potions that scroll you and everything else. Please note, however, that your progression will not be saved between phases. This means your character will be wiped clear and all progress will be lost. And this is because the beta is a test environment where people try and break the game, find bugs to fix, and it's not a replacement for existing servers. They've also informed us that these kind of rollbacks and wipes could also happen in the middle of a phase, if necessary. In other news, the team has also announced the minimum specs required to run one account or multiple and they look as such. For single accounts, you will be comfortable with 8GB of RAM and any old GPU will do. For multi-accounters, however, Ankama released this new t-shirt to convey their sentiment. The team actually recommends a whopping 16 to 32GB if you want to run 4 or more accounts comfortably. If you don't like it, then pick up more shifts at your nearest McDonald's. Or perhaps go back to touching grass, whichever you prefer. One thing's notable here is, even with multi-accounts open, the game is not GPU intensive, which is good news given the prices of these things. And because we have some special members of the community that play on special machines, Ankama has released the specs for those as well. And they look as such. Feel free to pause the broadcast and examine your life choices to the judgy looks I'm giving you right here. Moving on to some notable mentions from this blog post. First of all is, there will be rewards. Yes, you've heard that. For the people who reach level 10, 100, 150 and 200, and some achievement points as you can see in the infographic here, they will gain some tokens that can be traded with an NPC for some cosmetics and special titles that will be available during future events. 
There will be no new content in the game. Everything you know about the game as it exists right now will be identical during the beta and and when the Unity update finally releases. Haven bags will not be available during the first phase, so don't be surprised if you can't access yours. The entire beta was translated to all supported languages, however, the new interfaces might have some parts that aren't yet. Please be indulgent and report those so they can fix them. Our next scoop is from Europe, and France in particular, where Ankama is celebrating 20 years of Dofus with a convention that will be held from the 30th of August to the 1st of September. The studio has decided to send Vlogger Malt with some newly purchased gear, thanks to the support of the International Pub to cover the event for you. Max participation is required from the International Pub, as Malt and Manaya have worked on a couple of exciting events, to name a few. A special tour that is specially designed for the internationals on the first day, all in English and just for you. The second one is a series of lives with Malt to discuss the event and recap the most important parts. Dates are yet to be determined. And last, very likely, a single malt scotch whiskey toast with our vlogger correspondent. Up next, what's new at the International Pub? Next up, we turn our eyes away from France into larger Europe. In the current tense and challenging global diplomatic climate, a glimmer of hope is paving the way for the most unexpected friendship between Europe and China. This is largely thanks to the surprising efforts of a young man who keeps finding the nearly extinct species referred to as Aeluropoda melanoleuca, pandas, as we know them, and shipping them back to China at his own cost. This clearly demonstrates that there is in fact no stronger love than panda hate. News in from Russia. Comrade Tura was arrested after drinking too much homemade schnapps and beating up a horse, two bears and crashing Putin's domicile. Reports from police who have dragged him out confirmed that in fact he wanted to fight the big boss so that he may be able to drop the fucking paragon at last. We do expect that he will spend some years in the Siberian gulags imprisoned with non-criminals like Nileza and Mrs. Freeze in the coming days. Back to Central Europe now, with this recent footage that has emerged of Eslix heading to the Ankama convention. Reports indicate that he has set off on foot and is expected to reach his destination by the 29th of August. And now we turn our eyes to Africa. With the world famous Congolese design and fashion show called The Sapology has been cancelled this year after Ugolaz posted this cryptic photo of himself in an airport. The chairman of the committee came out with a strong statement saying that the fragile balance of three women to one man in the country is at risk if this man sets foot there. We'd rather not take any chances, so we've cancelled it. Very good of them. New shocking footage emerged of Alan, one of the top three maguses in the Talkasha server in a central square in France teaching people how to mage. Let's review the footage. <laughs> Following his departure from the country, we asked ChatGPT how to say hello in France. And this is the response we got. Mashallah brother, doing some excellent work right there. Next up, we have reports of the most unexpected beef that nobody ever expected between the world famous Mr. Worldwide, also known as Pitbull, and the Norwegian Astronomy Society, whereby Pitbull attacked this young man, also titled Mr. Worldwide, saying that he hopes the astronomer from Norway continues to face microphone issues so he can, and I quote here, leave some women for the rest of us. The astronomer came out with a response that shook the whole Dofus community more than whatever the fuck they did to the judge. The incredible this came in the form of a photo with his gorgeous girl looking all happy, thereby indicating that he only has eyes for her and that in fact he does intend to leave some women for the rest of us. And also, he will not improve his microphone quality as a gesture of sincerity to appease the lesser famous Mr. Worldwide. The bald singer and all men around the world came out to the street to cheer and clap the good news. 
In less exciting news, and in a shocking turn of event, Iron Man Washington was caught getting leeched while building his own house. Everyone is disappointed that he did not craft the property himself and instead hired building leechers. We reached out for comments, he declined to speak with us and instead emailed us this image right here. And from the land down under, the pub news team secured footage from Australia that clearly shows that the news of Mr. Black having died are grossly exaggerated lies. It's good to see that he's very much full of life and energy. And last one on today's news, Mr. Worldwide again, aka Pitbull, is yet another person in a series of thousands of people to come out to express his confusion as to how we should pronounce Neo's name. Let's have a listen. And tonight, let's enjoy life. Pitbull, Naya, Neo, that's right. And finally, we firmly recognize that today's cast has been short, but the team is still satisfied with its length, considering that at least it has been longer than Charger's Dofus YouTube career. This is it for today's episode. We shall return with more news very shortly. Until then, we bid you farewell and see you on the next one.